Hi guys, it's me Karen and welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Today I'm going to do a swatching of these watercolors that I picked up. These are the Kiritake Gamzi Tambi watercolors in the new 24 color set number two Art Nouveau set. And they have these gorgeous colors in here. And I did a little swatching on the inside on all of the um, cases that they come in. They have this little thing to do your watercoloring uh, swatches on. So I've done it on here. This is kind of like really thin paper. So, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what they look like. This is the sheet. So you can go this way, actually. So I'll try to make it look like it's set up to do it this way. This is probably a photocopy on watercolor paper, so I thought I would try it on watercolor paper since I have a little thing here, watercolor paper. This is one of those. Um, gosh, I don't even remember what this is called. It's got the little llama here, and I've done watercolor in here before. I've laid down lines. I'm not going to put the names down. I'm just going to um, put the paint down. Let's see if I can do this somehow where you can see both of these. Okay, we'll start it that way. On the back of these little trays that come in here, they're all removable. You get the color name, saffron yellow, the number 404, which goes with the 404 that's on here. And then, of course, they have the name written here, which is not in English, but it is on the back here. And you have the number in case you take them out and need to put them back in in the same order that you had them. They all come out. These... <laughs> just get it all over my hand. The um, little lines here stay in there so you know where to put them back. If you have another set and you want to mix the colors in, you can do that also. So I'm just going to take a little water and see what we do here. This one, of course, was the saffron yellow. And I'm just going to lay it down, go over the black line, and see what it does. I'll get the little paper here that I stuck in the lid if I can manage to get that out. Sorry for all that noise. It also tells you the name up here. If you keep this with your papers, you'll know what names they are, and I'm going to use that so I don't need to um, lift up the trays. <laughs> the next one is going to be green gold. These will have a tiny bit of a milky uh, coloration to them. They're not as transparent as some other watercolors, but that's just the way these work. This one is Flax Beige, which is a nice beige color. And the next one will be Ecro. Done any needlepoint? That's the color that they use. <laughs> okay, the next one is coral. No, pale pink. Pale pink. This is such a nice light pink. It is so pretty. I like that one a lot. And after the pale pink is the coral pink. Put that down here. Kind of looks like your um, medium flesh tone. Okay, then there's Potter Pink. Oops, that one is not the one I need to go into. This one. And that is a nice dusty pink color. Oh, there's uh, the crimson. Oh. <laughs> no, this is vermilion. Okay. It's the orange red color. I'm just messing up my. The next one is Alizarian crimson. which 
which looks kind of like a Victorian velvet uh, distressing color. Uh, mauve taupe. Which is your purple in this one. Did I do that wrong? I did that wrong. Okay, that's the old mauve. So we'll put the uh, one I didn't get out here, over here. And this one is the mauve taupe. That's the old mauve. Then we have the grayish blue. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, after grayish blue, we have cobalt turquoise light. And then pale aqua. And cobalt green. Okay. And those will dry nicely there. And we will have to put this down here. All right. That was the cobalt green, right? Then we have billard green. The reason the black line is there is to see how transparent the um, paint is. Next one is shadow green. It's got more blue in it. And then pea green. Okay. <laughs> After pea green is ivory, ivy, ivy green. And then green gray. Oh, I love that color. Beige gray. Yellow brown. Mars yellow. And our last one, which is Venetian red. Okay. That's what we have. I'm going to let those dry. I'm not going to blow them or anything. I'll just let them dry and then we'll come back and see if we can put another coat on there and see how dark they actually get if you have two coats. Okay, I'll be back in just a bit. Okay, mostly dry. Not going to rub my hands on it this time. <laughs> but you can see the differences between, say, this light wash here and then the extra one on the top. You get a brighter color. Some of them, like these, will also make it so that the black line will not show through, especially these really dark ones. So that's something to keep in mind. I mean, on color book pages, if you want to go around and make your lines not show up, putting a darker color on there will help hide that. You could probably put a couple coats of some of these on some of those lines and it'll also go away. See, this one's a little light pink, and two coats will give it a deeper pink. So that is the color range of this set.
If you want to know anything else about the uh, colors, the Kiritake Company was founded in 1902, and they were celebrating their 120th anniversary uh, this year. <laughs> And they came out with um, this set. Now I'm going to double check if it's this year or if it was um, 22. Because that would probably be the better year of that. Anyway, this set has been out balancing the colors of the Art Nouveau period. Uh, they are traditional Japanese watercolors, developing colors that are based off of those seen in nature. The colors are vivid and opaque, as they call it. Uh, more opaque than some watercolors, but not quite opaque as in <clears throat> like acrylic paints. So they, they are um, smooth rather than granulated, dries with a slight sheen, but mostly matte. If you'll notice, there is not a real big um, shine on those, unless they're still wet, <laughs> but they're more of a matte uh, the unique technology of these paints are developed with the pigment ink that leaves a flat wash easily while remaining uh, also easy to blend with other paints. I have seen that. I mean, they, if you get them too close together, they will just merge right into each other. You can dilute with um, more water to create a more watercolor-like picture while still remaining bright and opaque. Or you can use as a gouache by limiting the water dilution, which is um, instead of using like a big old brush like this with a ton of water, take all the water out of that and then just dip it in there and pick that paint up and you can get a pretty thick paint coming off of these, which is also nice. Okay, they are packaged in a simple cardboard box with an elegant green washi overlay. <laughs> Perfect for gifts. And yeah, uh, they have um, their own uh, the description of the pans are much larger than typical watercolor pans, giving you the ability to use both a small and a large brush quite easily. And this is a very big brush, so fit right in there really nicely. So, those are the colors. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll leave a link down below uh, on the paint set. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone. Bye now.